Yeah, I know. I'm violating my own rules again, but I kind of have to because we're pre-recording a lot of the show nowadays. Again, I said this in the previous video, but I'll say this one more time. I'm going on a trip on the weekend, so I have to pre-record the show. So this video that you're watching on Thursday, 3 p.m. PST, is actually being recorded. It is 11.09 a.m. Wednesday, April 13th, so a full 24 hours and a bit before you're going to be listening to this on YouTube. But even though this is a video talking about one team in Arizona that is going to be playing about four hours after the video gets uploaded, and then we're probably going to make a post-game video about that as well because they're playing the Canucks, I still wanted to talk about this because there are some other teams that bring themselves into the conversation that make things very interesting as well. So, if you search up this title on YouTube and you search LEGO Rocks 99, you'll find another video from... When the heck was that other video made? Let's go ahead into my calendar app and see. When was the last time we made the Right Watch video? It was... back in December? Yeah, so December, it was Arizona, Montreal, Ottawa, and Seattle. December 28th, so before the new year. Four months ago, we made a video talking about Shane Wright and the ideas as to where he could go in the National Hockey League. Now, four months later, things haven't really changed. We're still talking about the same teams, except Ottawa has kind of left that conversation. We're still bringing up Seattle, we're still bringing up Montreal, we're still bringing up Arizona. We're going to be talking about these three teams, as well as Shane Wright, the player he is, and how he could go on to these squads and help him out, especially after we have seen a lot more of the NHL season come and go. So, who is Shane Wright? He is the projected first overall pick at the 2022 NHL Entry Draft. If you want an extended look as to who he is and how he plays, we made an entire scouting report video talking about what he is, what he's going to be at the NHL level, how he's played so far. You can go ahead and check that out. It's the Why I Want series. We talk about a lot of prospects here on this channel. But Shane Wright is supposed to be the best one of them all. 18 years old, 6'1", 187 as a right-handed center. He is ranked unanimously by every scouting outlet first overall, so I think you'll probably see him go first overall. Just a hunch right there. This season, playing for the Kingston Frontenacs, his third season of OHL action, technically, because he was a part of the team last year, he just didn't play because the OHL didn't play. It's his third year of being a part of the league, where he had 94 points in 61 games played. He's got about, what, three games left, and he's got a pace of probably being able to score five points in those last three games, so the projection here on Elite Prospects says 99 points in 64 games played, and I know what you might be thinking. Okay, that's good, but first overall, I mean, Alexi Lafreniere, when he was in the QMJHL, had like a hundred something points. He was by far the best player in that league. He was only bested by Marco Rossi in the entire CHL that year, and Marco Rossi had 120 points. Shane Wright went out there and got exceptional status, and you see what Connor McDavid and John Tavares, the other guys to get exceptional status, have done in the OHL before getting drafted. So why is Shane Wright only on pace for 99 points in 60-something games as an exceptional status player and the unanimous first overall choice? The thing is with Shane Wright is that even though he might not have those Connor McDavid-like numbers, he's still a very good hockey player that is really great at just doing what needs to be done. In the offensive zone, he's so smart, he knows exactly what it is he needs to do, he's so precise with his movements. The little things he does with the puck, his passes, his shot, it's all exceptional and projects to Shane Wright potentially being a point-per-game player in the NHL by the time he hits his prime, if not maybe even just a tad higher. Now again, that's not Connor McDavid 120 points every year, but it's still pretty good and I don't think anybody's going to go out there and dispute the idea that a 90 point potential player is a bad pickup at first overall. So you go over to the NHL standings and you take a look at points percentage, reverse points percentage, and you see that the same teams that we talked about last time are still kind of there. The Ottawa Senators have moved up, so they're no longer in the bottom three-ish position, but instead you have yourselves the Arizona Coyotes with a .336 points percentage as I record this audio. Montreal has a .349 points percentage, Seattle has a .356, and then you have a bigger gap over to Philadelphia, New Jersey, Chicago, everybody else. Due to time constraints, we only have 10 minutes to go over this topic right here. Let's talk about the last three teams in the NHL and how Shane Red could be a part of those organizations. For Arizona, it's going to be cool seeing Shane Wright suit up alongside of Austin Matthews as a 1-2 center punch down the line. And obviously, I'm kind of joking. I just like to say that because it takes a lot of people off, especially Leafs fans. But 
For Shane Wright going over to Arizona and becoming the guy, this is kind of what the Arizona Coyotes need, is it not? A number one franchise potential center that can go over there and do what it is that needs to be done just in all situations and help out this team in the long term. Arizona has bolstered up their draft prospect system over the past little bit here, so... It's not only just right they're going to walk away out of this draft with. They've got so many picks, so many opportunities to get good players, and if in 2028, let's say, we're looking back at the 2022 draft and saying, okay, this is the draft where the Arizona Coyotes change their fate, Shane Wright being the frontrunner of that and being the guy in the center of the stage definitely does not sound like a bad idea. There are some pretty spread out, talented options here in this draft, and the Arizona Coyotes do have a ton of picks, so... Assuming things go right for a lot of these guys, I think the Coyotes do have a lot of potential to be sitting on a gold mine when it comes to picking and choosing which prospects in the draft they want to use in their future. For Shane Wright, though, playing alongside a Clayton Keller, for example, that could be a pretty good one-two punch on a line. You still have Nick Schmaltz, who, I mean, he's young enough to be considered sticking around long-term, right? He was drafted in 2014, so it's not like he's going to be a dinosaur at that time frame. He's one of the best centers in the NHL, based off of the amount of points that that guy gets once in a while. So maybe the Shane Wright-Nick Schmaltz center punch is something you want to look at in Arizona. Going over to the other teams, though, Montreal is second worst in the NHL in points percentage, but it doesn't feel that way anymore. There are a lot of good stories going on with the Habs right now in terms of the Martin St. Louis bump and Carey Price coming back soon, but when it comes to the draft, this is probably one of the more under-the-radar stories, since I don't really see too many people in Montreal talking about the draft per se and Shane Wright and all that. But Montreal, as the second worst team in the NHL via points percentage, is very much in the running. And what a Shane Wright like player could do is really relieve what Nick Suzuki is responsible for going towards the long term future. Having that one two punch of Suzuki Shane Wright could be phenomenal. And I say this not lightly, so hold on to these words right here. It could be very nice seeing the Montreal Canadiens have two very legitimate Rocket Richard candidates year in and year out. Cole Caulfield, if he projects the way that we all want him to project, and he continues developing the way we want him to develop, he's probably going to get there one day. Like, is he a 40-goal scorer in the NHL? Maybe. Is he a 45-goal scorer in the NHL? Maybe. Is he a 50-goal scorer in the NHL? Maybe. The fact that it's even a maybe and not a flat-out no makes him one of these guys that could potentially contend for a Richard one day, and Shane Wright is in that same territory, too. His shot is just fantastic, and his scoring ability is unmatched amongst most players in this draft, and he's got all the other tools that make him such a great player outside of goal scoring at his disposal as well, that having Wright and Caulfield on the same team, let alone the same power play, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of pucks put into the back of the net with those two suiting up for the Habs. Like, I don't say that lightly. Please don't go out there and try to paint this, oh, he's such a Habs fan, you know? He's so biased. He's going to say this about Caulfield and Wright together. They're both that good, and I think that there's a conversation that you could be having when you talk about Shane Wright should he head over to Montreal, but of course, we still have one more team to go over that is indeed the Seattle Kraken. Now, we talked about Matty Beneers a few days ago, and we spoke about how polished he was as an NHL prospect. Everything you can do on the ice, Matty Beneers just absolutely excels at. He plays with pace, he's so smart, he's so aware of everything that's going on, he's defensively responsible, he playmakes well, he can shoot, and we saw that in the first game of Matty Beneers' NHL career when he set up, who was it, Ryan Donato on the right side with a brilliant no-look pass, selling the shot hard, Markstrom bit on the shot, but no, Beneers goes cross creek to the right circle from the left point, pretty much. It was a beautiful play. The pass is what made the goal even happen in the first place, but Matty Beneers is just that guy, and he projects to probably being a very capable second-line center, one of the better second-line centers in the NHL, if not a first-line center on a bad team. But if you have that Shane Wright being the number one guy and having Beneers as your second player, just telling Beneers, okay, here's your task. You go out there and penalty kill, Shane Wright will get the tough matchup, so you'll get the secondary matchups. Just go out there and do your thing. I think it could be a really, really nice setup having Wright and Beneers together, growing alongside of each other, because they're only drafted one year apart. Beneers is only 19 years old, Shane Wright will be 18 once the draft concludes and the season starts up next year and he makes the NHL, so 
Seeing these two guys eventually mold themselves into NHL superstars looks like a great plan as well. So, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about these three teams, the Arizona Coyotes, the Seattle Kraken, as well as the Montreal Canadiens. Which of these three do you think Shane Wright could help out the most? Which of these three teams do you want to see him go to the most? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Wright and his profile, where he projects in the next few years, and which of these teams you like the most. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99, and... Bye.